our members are doing amazing things and we want to tell your story. So sign up at greenhomeinstitute.org, become a member. You'll get instant access to all these webinars. You'll support our mission. And we've got a couple of these corn-based mugs here left for you, USA made. So we're going to send it out to you uh, before those run out. So make sure to get signed up. And before we get started, a huge thanks to our top tier sponsor, uh, Reem. They took the gold at the Edison Awards in 2021. Um, Reem makes the all new Proterra, which is an energy efficient, quiet and all electric hybrid heat pump water heater. The future of water heating is finally here. 40, 50, 65, 80 gallons, maybe getting bigger. Um, basically the way that these work is it pulls in already heated air, either from the conditioned space or outside, brings it through a refrigerant loop, heats that water, um, and then runs out the condensate line and you have super energy efficient water. It even dehumidifies and cools spaces in the summertime. Uh, you can just see the efficiency here, much more efficient than electric, much more efficient than gas for energy savings. Uh, you've got uh, different operating ses settings. You've got uh, advanced warranties, leak detection, and working with automated automotive home systems. So you've got the Econet, um, which you track, and I love using this with my Ream. I can go in and track my energy usage and kind of nerd out on that a little bit. I can set operating schedules. Again, you can get maintenance schedules, um, leak detection reports, and all that. And just here's some of the ways you set it up in a garage, in a basement if you want to do it ducted. Most of the time, it's ductless. They can even be strung together to serve a whole multifamily housing complex. We just had someone talking about that the other day. Uh, the other cool thing about these systems is they can work as a battery. Occupants can program this technology to heat water when electric rates are low and off peak hours. Utility programs across the country are using these for battery grids to incentivize this kind of behavior. And you can check out more of that with our friends over at National Resource Defense Council. Uh, go to ream.com, check out the Proterra, take a look. Huge thanks to our second tier sponsor here, Niagara. Uh, they want to talk to you a little bit about just the history of flushing toilets and how, on how we're on our way down to 0.8 gallons per flush, if not lower, using vacuum assisted technology, which is a little bit different than pressure assist, and it works much more efficiently. They've got different toilets for you to check out. They've got their Stealth, which is their most efficient, all the way going down to a dual flush at 0.5. And then they got a new line here, too, that has two of them with Stealth technology and then the other two with uh, pressure assist, if you still want to go back to that. All right. Well, um, welcome to why use the Certified Water Rating Index, or WRI. This course is brought to you by the Green Home Institute. The Green Home Institute is a nonprofit with a mission to empower people to make healthier and more sustainable choices in the places we live. And I'm the program manager here, and I will be your moderator today. This course is approved for multiple different continuing education units, including our own internal certified green home professional under the water uh, pillar, of course. Uh, and um, we uh, also are uh, uh, certified under AIA health, welfare, and safety, which may make it applicable to your state-based design or contractor license. Um, before I hand it off, today uh, is a World or National Energy Efficiency Day. So happy Energy Efficiency Day. And, you know, um, water is a big part of energy efficiency that typically gets left out in the conversations around insulation, weatherization, um, now heat pump technology, um, things that directly save that you can see save energy. But, you know, the reality is, is when we cut our water usage, we're looking at reducing flow, uh, sh uh, shower flow rates aerator flow rates, kitchen, that's going to reduce energy. It's going to save energy. Also, when we save water across the board, when you or your clients are in muni water supplies, municipal, basically every drop of water you don't demand from that municipal is less energy, less tax dollars, less carbon emissions on that end. So there is uh, money and energy to be saved there. Uh, if you or your clients are on well water, don't think you're getting away scot-free here just because you're not paying a bill every time that pump runs, it's going to drain energy on the house. Um, and so there is an energy efficiency aspect to saving that water, even on well water. So just like energy efficiency performance modeling, we're all doing that now, right? We're using HERS ratings, ASHRAE 90.1. We've You've all got that down. What we are now moving towards is water performance programs that can measure and validate uh, water savings from the design stage 
just like energy efficiency, so you have a water rating and a water label. And so that's why I'm super excited to introduce our, our speaker today, uh, Cindy. She's been with us, I think, maybe two or three other times, so I'm super excited to have her back. And we've certainly had our friends over at the Home In Innovations Lab on a couple times. So Cindy, with that, I am gonna pass it off to you and please do take it away. Great, thank you so much. Um... It says, I can't share until you're done sharing. Perfect. Okay, which screen are you seeing? Are you seeing full size or my notes? Oh uh, yeah, I see your notes right now. Okay. Yeah, thanks so much, Brett. And I, I agree with you that, you know, energy efficiency and water efficiency are so inextricably linked not only with use at the home, but also delivery on a regional scale, getting water to homes really does take a lot of energy. And I think we're at this point where we've really sucked out all the energy efficiency in some ways, you know, with our codes and rating systems. And I think people are really looking to water efficiency as that next way to get um, some additional energy efficiency out of the home. So I think, you know, that coupled with you know, weather events and raising rates of water prices or water hookups. I think this is really an important time right now. And it's exciting that these performance-based options are emerging. Um, so as Brett said, I am Cindy Wasser. I'm the Senior Manager of Green Building Programs at Home Innovation Research Labs. And today's session is focused on the Water Rating Index, which is a methodology embedded within the National Green Building Standard. Um, so today we're going to look at the different water efficiency compliance options within the NGBS and then kind of do a deeper dive into the key components of the water rating index, the process, the tools, and then we'll wrap up with some add-on recognitions that you're set up for if you are getting a certified WRI score for the homes or buildings that you're working with. For those that aren't familiar, let me introduce Home Innovation Research Labs. Um, we are a 57-year-old product testing and certification laboratory located just outside of DC. Our work is solely focused on the home building industry, and our corporate mission is to improve the quality, durability, affordability, and environmental performance of the nation's housing stocks. Um, one of the ways that we live that mission is through our green certification programs. We serve as adopting entity for the NGBS. That means that we're the certification body that's of the verification and certification requirements. And we confer certification when we are confident that the building is in compliance. So before we really get into the content today, I wanted to see who was in the audience. So the first question is, I work on the following projects. You can select all that apply and there is no wrong answer. No matter if you work with single family or multifamily, um, new or renovation, you know, you're in the right spot because this today's content is going to be applicable to you. I'll leave that up about, you know, 30 seconds until we get some good responses in. Um, I'm looking at the chat. I see that there are some questions about whether or not people can access a recording. Um, absolutely. Brett's already hit record, so it's going to be available as a recording after today's session. Okay, it looks like we're evenly split. Um, between single family new and single family renovation, but all of these categories got some response. Um, that's really helpful. And then the next question is, how familiar are you with the NGBS, the National Green Building Standard? Okay, so the dominant answer was not familiar. So that's great, you're in the right place. Um, and um, you're going to learn a little bit about the NGBS and a lot about water rating index. And you can always reach out for more information on the basics if you need. So the National Green Building Standard is an above code voluntary green rating system designed to recognize high performance construction across all residential occupancies. The NGBS is an ANSI approved standard, which is a testament to its broad consensus development process that involves builders, developers, manufacturers, code officials, green consultants, government representatives and more. And the NGPS is included within the ICC suite of I codes that form a complete and comprehensive set of building codes. And it's also recognized as an alternative compliance path for residential buildings within the International Green Construction Code or IGCC, 
which is an overlay code for sustainable development that's been adopted by several large jurisdictions, including Dallas, Texas, Washington, DC, and Montgomery County, Maryland. So I'm not gonna go into extensive detail about the NGBS. Um, if you want that, you know, send a message to Brett or myself. We both have webinar recordings that cover the basics of the National Green Building Standard. But what I want you to take away is that the NGBS is a broad multi-attribute rating system that covers more than just water efficiency. It includes practices related to lot design and development, resource efficiency, energy efficiency, water efficiency, indoor environmental quality, and operations and maintenance. For our home or building to be certified, it must hit point minimums in each and every category, as well as overall. So a project can't just group its points largely in one section, like energy efficiency. It needs to be higher performing across the board to be certified. And then to move up from one level to another, from bronze to silver to gold to emerald, it needs to be higher performing in each and every category. This point structure ensures that certified buildings are holistically greener at the standard construction, and it makes the NGBS one of the most comprehensive and rigorous green building rating systems available. So as an ANSI standard, the NGBS is subject to regular review and updating. Um, there's been four editions that have been released to date around every three years. The 2008 version has since been retired. The 2012 version has been, um, it's being sunsetted currently. And so right now the 2015 NGBS and 2020 NGBS are the most currently used versions. So one might assume if they're just getting started, the 2015 NGBS is older, therefore it must have a lower kind of tier of performance target and it must be more accessible. However, you know, there's a lot of new certification opportunities included within the 2020 NGBS and some added flexibility for certain project types. So it makes it a really great option if someone is just getting started. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of tools, decision trees, comparison charts on our website right now that can help a project team consider both the 2015 NGBS and the 2020 NGBS. Um, Today, we're largely looking at the 2020 NGBS because that's where the water rating index is included. So these are the major updates to the 2020 NGBS version. Um, I'm not gonna go into detail about them. We don't have time for that, um, but I just wanted to give you kind of the broad brush. Um, there's an expanded definition of residential. There's a new certification option for commercial space within a mixed use building. There's more flexible renovation requirements. There's a new certification pathway for single family homes. There is the new water performance pathway. And then finally, there's NGBS Green Plus, a special add-on recognition for homes that are higher performing in one or a few categories. Today's session is obviously focused on um, the water efficiency performance. So until the 2020 NGBS was released, builders and developers only had a prescriptive compliance option within the water efficiency chapter. They would earn points based on the water using features within the home and lot, such as the hot water delivery system, appliances, showers, faucets, toilets, irrigation. And then they would get points based on how many practices they were in compliance with. And um, at least 25 points was required to hit bronze level compliance. And then higher numbers of points were required for higher levels of compliance. So for example, if a project was seeking emerald level certification, they need to get 92 points or more in that chapter. Now with the 2020 NGPS, project teams have two options. They could do that same prescriptive compliance route, or now they can do a performance path approach, which is based on the newly incorporated water rating index. If they're doing the water rating index, the compliance is keyed with the score achieved, a score of 70 or lower is necessary, and lower scores are equated with higher levels of certification. So a, a 60 is the maximum allowed for silver, 50 is the maximum allowed for gold, and then 40 or lower is required for emerald level points. So a WRI score is an indication of a property's water use. And I say property instead of building because WRI addresses both indoor and outdoor water use. It also addresses water capture and reuse if that's been incorporated into the design of the building. Water efficiency is assessed as a single number between zero and 100. And just like with ERI or um, 
weaker scores, a lower score is better. WRI is available for newly constructed single family homes and multifamily buildings. Um, if it's a multifamily building, the whole building is evaluated as one um, rather than assessing a single score for each individual apartment or condo. Um, we only plan to offer WRI for new construction because WRI has only been incorporated into the new construction and single family certified pathways within the NGBS. We don't plan on issuing WRI scores for existing or renovated homes. So if a builder or developer seeks green certification to the NGBS and seeks the certified WRI score, they can unlock some additional marketing and communication information that can help them tell the story about that home and what sets it apart in a different way. Um, and it's something that they might not get access to if they were just seeking that multi-attribute green certification. Um, and it also sets them up for add-on certifications, namely WaterSense and the NGBS Green Plus Zero Water Certification, both of which we'll talk about later in today's program. So when we propped up the WRI program, we envisioned only issuing WRI scores for home and buildings that were seeking NGBS green certification. We imagined that both WRI and NGBS green would be sought concurrently. And we set up all of our kind of process and verification protocols with that structure in mind. Um, however, at this time, you know, we've been approached by a couple um, water districts and green building programs that have an interest in um, recognizing WRI or water sense when it's been pursued independently of green certification. And so we're working on setting up a couple pilot programs where we test out offering those as standalones. So if you want to be notified about the details of this launch, um, we're expecting probably late this year or early next year, um, please reach out to me. I'll get you signed up for our monthly e-newsletter. And I'd also welcome some like one-on-one -on -one conversations to really understand you know, what's going on in your local area? Um, is there water restrictions or an expectation for water ratings or certifications? And we can make sure that we're working toward getting your whole team kind of trained and informed and kind of really set up for when that launch is about to roll out. So um, as we said at the beginning, you know, I think water efficiency is really having a moment in the market and I think it's exciting to see um, the emergence of the water rating index within the NGBS, but also a number of other water rating programs. And so I just wanted to pause and see what everyone's experience is in the water space. So the options are HERS H2O, WERS, Florida Water Star, Home Water Score, Other, or None. And you can choose as many as you've touched in the past. Um, but this just gives me a sense for, for where you're coming from. Um, when we have the Q&A later, I'm sure I'm going to get questions like, how does this program compare to that? I'm not an expert on all these options, but I can try my best to respond to questions about how the WRI stacks up to these other programs. So Brett, you can close that out and share the results. Okay, so overwhelmingly, people are selecting none. And that's okay, because I think this is still kind of on the cutting edge and um, things are still emerging and rolling out. So you're really not missing out on anything. You're in a really good place and you're getting this new information that's, that's coming out to you. Okay. So the WRI is again, a zero to 100 scale and it's really easy to understand it enables easy comparison between homes so a consumer can look at one home compare it to another and understand which is more efficient in terms of overall water use in the property and consumers might already be familiar with zero to 100 scales for other energy and water rating programs that are available so it should be really easy for them to understand and comprehend you know much more easily than you know all these piecemeal um flow rates and flush volumes might be. Um, and it, it's really, as I said, it's a roll up um, looking at the entire home, not just an individual um, component. And I think the greatest benefit is that both the builders and the homeowner or renter gets greater insight into expected water use. So the WRI calculator 
not only provides that roll up summary number, but it also includes estimates of um, expected indoor water use on an annual basis and expected outdoor water use on um, an annual basis. And that can be really informative because at the design stage, a team can look at the WRI calculator and evaluate different design choices to understand their impact on annual water use and expected NGBS points. And then at sale, builders can share both that WRI score as well as annual water use estimates with their potential buyers so that the buyers can understand their anticipated water bills and their total cost of ownership beyond that monthly mortgage payment. So these are the key components addressed by the water rating index. So indoor water use looks at all the water using devices within the home or building um, and structural waste. So structural waste is any water that's wasted as a result of the hot water delivery system. So think about you've turned the shower on, you might have to wait a minute or a couple minutes, depending on how big your house is, to get um, hot water running um, that you feel comfortable stepping into. Outdoor water use looks at both landscape water use as well as non-landscape water use, which is pools, spas, fountains. And then if the home has any rainwater, gray water, or black water um, capture systems, that can be assessed and those can be applied against the indoor and outdoor water use expectations um, as a credit to kind of um, lower the score. So at its core, WRI is simple. It's a sum of all the water uses divided by baseline values and multiplied by 100. But there's a lot more baked into the system that we don't, we're not gonna touch on today. Um, but just know, you know, it's a basic, you know, 100 times total water use divided by baseline water use. So the water rating index methodology specifies that a accredited professional with specialized training in water efficiency must be the one that um, does the scoring and verification for WRI. So we've set up a training that's available to um, the professionals that have gone through uh, accreditation to become MGBS green verifiers. And this gives them eligibility to support builders and developers in seeking a WRI score for their buildings. And it gives them the ability to market their knowledge of water efficiency using specialized logos and certificates. And it sets them up to be listed on Home Innovations website. Um, so people looking for professionals with those special credentials can easily find them and get the support that they need. So this is what it looks like. Um, you can go on this page, see all of those professionals, where they're located and what their um, accreditations are. So here's the process. During the planning and design phases, the WRI verifier will meet with the builder or design team to assess the baseline and calculate a preliminary or design WRI score. Then the selected water efficient features will be incorporated into the construction of the home or building. And during the final inspection for green certification, the WRI verifier will confirm the features present and generate a final WRI score. When the final verification packet is submitted to Home Innovation, a complete and signed WRI uh, page and the full calculator tool will be included. And then when the final green certificate is issued, the WRI score is identified right on the certificate, so it's really visible to the consumer. So we've created a really kind of straightforward, simple calculator tool that's based in Excel. Um, and it has one main tab where the WRI verifier is going to do the bulk of his or her work. Um, the top of the page has a toggle for report phase. So if you're selecting design, this is you know, the design phase where the WRI verifier is going to be working through the prompts to calculate the baseline water use and the design WRI score. Um, at the design phase, that WRI score can then be copied over to the NGPS green scoring tool to calculate the expected number of points based on that projected value. Then at final, the WRI verifier will select verification at the top and work through the prompts again, deleting all the design values and replacing with the actual verified features of the home and results of on-site testing. During this phase, the final WRI score is calculated 
And then this is what's going to be copied over to the verification report tab of the NGPS Green Scoring Tool to award points based on that value. And when everything is complete, um, they're going to print out this page and both the verifier and builder are going to sign it. And they're going to include both that signed PDF and the full Excel sheet with their final verification packet submission to Home Innovation. So let's first dive into the indoor water use. Um, so the WRI tool has key sections for indoor water use in the units. And then there's also an area for common areas um, if there's any common areas um, for like a multifamily building. At the design phase, the verifier is gonna work with the project team to calculate the baseline and preliminary WRI values. Um, the Baseline and preliminary values are calculated based on number of bedrooms, presence of water devices, building footprint, floor to floor um, height, and then the predominant pipe material and diameter. After construction is complete, the verifier is going to perform on site verification to calculate that final WRI score. This is the final score that is applied to get points to comply with that water efficiency compliance, and then it's included on the final green certificate. Um, the design indoor water use section looks at the following inputs. Presence of water devices, presence of a master bath, number of units, number of bedrooms, state of flow rates of installed devices. So I'm gonna note, we're not expecting verifiers to test the water use at every fixture or appliance. They're gonna instead review manufacturer's literature or look at that stamped flow rate on the device and make sure that it matches what's in the WRI calculator. And then finally, verified structural waste. This is a physical test that we're gonna talk about in a second. And then other water devices are also noted if they're present. So other water devices would be things like swamp coolers or um, purification systems, things that aren't present in every home as standard and aren't included in that list of water using devices. So structural wastewater is something that is performed as a physical test. Um, it's measured using a stopwatch and a water container. Um, the verifier is gonna calculate the volume of water that is released between the time that the water was turned on and when the temperature reaches 100 degrees Fahrenheit. This test should be done before any other test in the home to avoid preheating the water pipes. And it should be performed at the water fixture that is furthest from the hot water heater. If it's a large home with multiple systems, multiple tests should be performed and then the highest volume value entered into the calculator. For multifamily buildings, the structural waste test only needs to be performed on the largest unit of each multifamily floor plan design. So for example, if it's, um, you know, it'd be the largest one bedroom, one bathroom, the largest two bedroom, one bathroom, the largest two bedroom, two bathroom, et cetera, needs to be tested then the value from the worst performing unit is entered into the calculator. Whenever the verified structural waste amount is 15% or greater than the preliminary value, three additional units of that floor plan type should be tested. All right, so now we're looking at outdoor water use. So at the design phase, the WRI verifiers can work with the project team to calculate the baseline and the designed outdoor water use values based on area for landscaping, irrigation systems and controllers, plant species to be installed, area for pools, spas, and fountains. During the final inspection, the verifier is gonna be visually confirming these details. So unlike with the indoor water use sections, there's only one combined section for outdoor water use. These inputs are used to calculate the baseline and design calculations, or the baseline and verified calculations depending on what phase of the project you're in. You'll see that the WRI calculator is designed to accommodate four zones. These are areas with unique combinations of irrigation and plant type. For each of these areas, the total square footage is entered, then the irrigation type is selected. There are 11 irrigation types to choose from. You can see them in the box. Um, oh, actually they're not shown here, but there are 11 different types to choose from. For the design calculation, selection will be based on the landscape plan. And then for the final calculation, the actual installed irrigation type would be selected. 
manufacturer's literature or similar would be reviewed to confirm that system type. Next, the plant type is entered for each zone. There are seven options here, including turf, annual flowers, woody plants, desert plants, and home food crops. At the plan review stage, the selection is based on what's featured in the landscape plan. And then at final, the plant types observed during the final inspection should be selected. The indoor, oh, excuse me, the selected plants must be installed and verified. So we will not issue a final WRI score for homes and buildings that don't yet have landscaping installed. Um, all features that are kind of factored into the WRI score must be installed and verified before that final score can be issued. Finally, if the zone features a rain sensor or a daily water weather tracking app um, controller, those items will be checked as well. And they can be confirmed using the manufacturer's literature for selected and installed products. The final set of inputs for outdoor water use are the total area for pools, spas, and fountains. And since areas with or without sun cover experience different rates of evapotranspiration, there are two separate entries, total area of pools with motorized cover and total area of all other pools, spas, and fountains. Um, the final section is regarding rainwater and wastewater capture. So if a home or building doesn't have any plans to capture and reuse any of those three water types, this whole section can be skipped. However, if there are plans to um, collect rain, gray water, or black water, that can be filled out and it's applied as a credit to offset the indoor and outdoor water use um, uh, estimates. So at the design phase, the, the verifier will work with the team to calculate the designed water reuse credits based on the plans. Um, so at this point, they'd be looking at roof or site surface material, roof or site surface area, plan storage tank size, plan filtration and purification systems. And then at the final inspection, the WRI verifier is going to be visually confirming these same details to finalize that water reuse credit. So then after working through all those different steps, the indoor water use for the units, the indoor water use for common areas, outdoor water use, and then water capture, um, the WRI tool calculates that overall WRI score as well as a total expected for indoor and outdoor water use on an annual basis in gallons. So at this point, we've looked at all the key components that are part of the WRI calculated indoor water use, the water capture for reuse, the outdoor water use as well. So again, that you've already seen the slide, just kind of reaffirming um, what we've looked at over the last couple of minutes. So at this point, we're gonna pause. Um, we're gonna transition to talk about some add-on recognitions in a moment, but I just wanted to see, Brett, do you have any like immediate questions that you think would be smart to tackle now? Um, yeah, I think that's a good idea. Uh, there are some technical questions here. Um, you know, how do you evaluate the structural waterways systems when you have a timed hot water circulation system? I'm sorry, can you repeat that again? How do you evaluate the structural water waste when you um, have uh, systems that are like a timed hot water circulation system? How does that get played into that? Um, I don't think we've included specific verification protocols, but I would assume that in cases like that, the volume of water would be very little or zero to be entered into the structural wastewater value in the calculator tool. Right. It would just show up right away. So you would, you would benefit from it, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and there are points for that in the NGBS system too, correct? Exactly. Yeah. It's kind of like a two for one then. Um, and then uh, the, for rainwater capture, how do you normalize the variability of rainwater rainfall consumption during drought periods? Is that factored in at all? Yeah, that's a great question. So the WRI tool that we have created 
Um, it's location based. So once somebody enters in an address, it's going to automatically know which climate zone they're in and how much monthly rainfall and evapotranspiration um, occurs in that area. So mm -hmm. it's going to be looking at a monthly basis, how much water is reasonably going to be captured. And it's going to be different based on where you're building. If you're building in Atlanta versus Arizona, there's going to be different um, values. And I guess to follow up on that, especially for us here in the cold weather states, do you differentiate in your reports? You know, clearly we're not using any water outside in the wintertime. So does it tell us what our monthly water is? Is it only yearly? We'll show, um, you're going to be able to see like the expected monthly rainfall oh, okay. and evapotranspiration. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think we've set it up so that you can see the monthly expected totals. Um, but that's a good suggestion. You know, somebody mm -hmm. might be looking for that in addition to that annual water use. And that would just be additional information that we could readily provide if there was uh, interest in that. Mm -hmm. And do you allow the EPA's water sense water budget tool in lieu of your own for the projections or is that not allowed for this program? It's, it's not allowed, you know, as a ANSI standard, you know, home innovation is the certification body and like we can't rewrite the rules, you know, so it says do prescriptive approach or do WRI for compliance. Mm -hmm. And so um, that's, that's what we offer. Um, you know, the NGBS is always open for regular comment and review. And so in the future, if someone had a suggestion that um, the water budget tool be uh, recognized as an alternative to WRI, um, that could be considered. Mm -hmm. I know like right now, in the lot design and development section, um, the water budget tool has been referenced as a, um, a, a as folks are developing that landscape plan, if they're using that water budget tool from EPA and they're making um, design choices based on that, they can get additional points for that. So that's in chapter five in the lot design section. Oh, okay, okay, mm -hmm. great. Um, well, I think that's all the main questions we have, at least specific to this. So uh, thanks for taking a quick stop. So. Yeah. Okay. All right. So next up, we have a poll question. Um, and it asks, were you a water sets partner, either a builder or raider under version one? You can say yes, no, or not sure. Brett, have you launched that poll? I don't see it. We, on my we, we have a failure to start poll error 401. I've never, never seen that one before. So everyone just type your answer into the chat real quick. <laughs> <Thanks>. <laughs> It'll be an unscientific poll in this case. <laughs> I'm going to screen capture that so I can. Yeah, <laughs> I see a lot of no's. It's just a flood of no's coming through. Okay. Um, so in February of this year, um, the EPA WaterSense program launched version two of their program. So version one was a largely a prescriptive approach to meeting their, um, to earning their WaterSense label for a home or building. Um, with this new version, they've kind of tapped into the organizational structures and existing rating systems. So they have identified independent organizations responsible for administering the verification and certification of water scents. So currently there are two recognized home certification organizations or HCOs. Um, so Home Innovation is one of them, ResNet is another. Um, and both organizations have demonstrated to water scents that we have a water sense approved certification method or WACM that is eligible um, to demonstrate that a home or building is at least 30% more water efficient than standard construction. Um, and we've also been kind of evaluated for our ability to kind of train and authorize and provide quality assurance um, for a water certification program. So we're really excited about this. I think this is a great opportunity to help builders meet growing consumer interest in offering a streamlined experience for obtaining green certification and the water sense label together. 
And by pursuing NGBS Green and WaterSense together, they can get that added marketable value to buyers. And in serving as an HCO, we can bring our residential construction expertise, certification expertise, and third-party philosophy to leverage and um, work toward um, you know, goals of improving water efficiency um, with EPA. So for WaterSense, we offer two compliance pathways. There's a prescriptive path and a performance path. Both of these are based on the 2020 NGBS version. Um, the prescriptive path has hand-selected practices from chapter eight or chapter 11. You know, what we looked at at the beginning, the prescriptive path practices based on, you know, what are the water using features? What are the appliances, irrigation, et cetera. The performance path is largely based on WRI. Um, so a WRI of 64 is lower. Um, the 64 or lower is required. And then some additional um, landscape plan and implementation practices need to be addressed as well. So this is like a no brainer for if a builder developer is already doing WRI either as a means to satisfy um, the water efficiency chapter of NGBS because they're seeking NGBS clean certification or if it's requested by their local jurisdiction as a kind of um, as a need to do to get water hookup, you know, this, if they're getting a score of 64 or lower, it takes very little additional effort to kind of do some additional kind of partnership agreements and get access to that water sense certification and, um, you know, logos from the EPA that are highly recognizable by consumers. Either way, prescriptive path or performance path satisfies EPA's goal of these homes or buildings meeting um, that 30% water efficiency target. So if you want to learn more, go to homeinnovation.com slash water sense certification. Um, here you can find the two paths, um, prescriptive path and performance path. They're downloadable as Excels. Uh, excuse me, downloadable as PDFs. And then if you want to um, practice scoring your home or building to WaterSense, you can um, also download any of our current NGPS green scoring tools and it's included as, um, as additional tabs in those tools. So I'll um, ask Brett to kind of drop this URL in the chat, so then you can have easy access that you can look at this after the program. So an additional add-on recognition that's available for builders seeking a certified WRI score is our NGBS Green Plus Zero Water Batch. So this is a recognition of homes that are super high performing in the area of water efficiency. Um, so a zero water home or building is designed to offer reduced environmental impact and greater independence to residents. The term zero water signifies that they're earning a zero score using the water rating index methodology and that the water supplied by rainwater capture or reuse gray water or black water is at a level that can meet all the water usage expected for the home. So the home might still be connected to a septic tank or a public water supply to supplement in the case of unusual activity. Um, but, you know, the based on projections, all the water coming to the rainwater collection system or the rainwater collection system is at a level that can meet all of the water needs. So we call this badge the zero water badge, not the net zero water badge, or the zero water ready badge, um, because we, we distinguish a couple of things. So, Net zero water refers to a home or building that's designed to use water from alternative sources at an equal amount as the amount of water that's being discharged from the building and returned to the original water source. So as the NGBS doesn't factor in withdrawal or return of water to the original water source, we didn't use that phrase. We didn't use net zero water. Um, zero water ready, implies that water capture and treatment systems are not yet installed, but will be installed at a later point. Um, and this didn't really fit our um, 
program either because for NGBS green certification or a certified water score, all home features, including those evaluated as part of the WRI achievement must be installed and verified. So I know that's, a lot, that's really long-winded, but I do get a lot of questions. People are like, what do you mean by zero water? Why is it not net zero water? So that's my explanation. That's how I distinguish between those three terms. So to earn the NGBS Green Plus Zero Water Certification, you have to be a new construction project that's um, pursuing NGBS Green Certification and complying via the Water Rating Index path. And you have to achieve a WRI score of zero um, using our provided tools and a accredited WRI verifier. Um, so I, I think that this is gonna be a add-on certification that's only kind of sought out by a few, a, a few special kind of high-end builders at the start at least. I think this isn't gonna be your everyday run of the mill um, production builder that's pursuing this, but I do think that there is some interest in homes like this. I know of at least one builder down in Texas that builds all of his homes to be net zero energy and zero water, and so this would be a great tool for him to set his homes apart and kind of highlight um, that to expense consumers in a way that's verified by a third party and not just him providing testimony of the you know systems and features installed. Um, so at this point, we've gone through all of the content that I plan to cover. We looked at the NGBS, water compliance options. We looked at the WRI. We looked at water sense a little bit. And we looked at our zero water certification. So at this point, I'm going to bring Brett back and we can start to work through the questions and comments you've put into the chat and Q&A. Awesome. Uh Cindy, and yeah, we do have some more uh, questions coming in. And so please do drop those questions. We do have time for questions. Um, but real quick, before we get to the questions, um, for those of you watching this in the future on demand, right? not right now, please take your quiz uh, with an 80% passing rate if you want to get your continuing education certificate. You can take that on our Thinkific channel or wherever else this is listed on USGBC's channel. For those of you watching this right now live here with me today, check your spam for uh, certs at gutenbergcerts.com. Within the next couple of days, you will see your certificate as long as you stayed this entire time uh, to watch the session and you'll be able to pick up your certificate there. And as always, we cannot do this without our uh, board of directors, our volunteers, our um, new executive director, Jose Reina, and all of our top tier sponsors who help support our work, Mitsubishi, Electric, April Air, Ream, and Build Equinox. Check them all out to help you build better and build greener um, today. So uh, uh, yeah, Cindy, there are uh, some more questions here. I guess one was really just more uh, about not being able to find where to sign up to become a uh, WRI verifier. They said the link wasn't working. So I don't know if you can hunt down a link for us in the chat at some point. You don't have to right now, but paste it in there um, and, or I can send it on or you can send it out in the email. They just said the one they have wasn't working. So uh, yeah. So that link that Deborah provided in the q and is the link and it is working as designed. We just have people currently going through the training. None are shown on that page yet at this time. It's still a new program. We're still kind of setting it up. People are mm -hmm. getting interested and in going through the training right now. Okay. Um, let's talk a little bit about the structural plumbing again, kind of back to that. Um, so obviously there was a sort of follow-up dialogue going on here that while you were talking, but just to be clear, uh, again, when you have those recirculation loops, the idea is that water is going round and round. And so most people are letting their water, their shower run, they walk away for 10 hours, right? You know, it's just running all the time. And so mm -hmm. that is going to use a lot of energy. Um, and so by having those recirculation loops in theory, when you go to do the test, it should hit that hundred degrees much faster. So that's what we were talking about. Um, yep. So hopefully that's, that's clear. Um, so anyway, uh, following up on it too, can PEX piping with less fittings and high interior pipe diameter help improve the WRI score 
And I'll add to this is I assume there must be some additional NGBS points somewhere else for advanced plumbing systems, correct? Yes. So for WRI, the baseline score that you're evaluated against does look at some basic details about, you know, what's the home floor size? Um, what's the expected longest pipe length? What's the pipe diameter and material? Mm -hmm. So that's where if you're using PEX or if you're using a high diameter pipe, it's going to affect the WRI mm -hmm. value. But then at the um, at the verified stage, um, it's looking at the results of that test. So mm -hmm. certainly if you are mm -hmm. using PEX with interior pipe diameter um, to get a more efficient uh, plumbing system design, mm -hmm. it will get you um, a lower value from that structural wastewater test. Mm -hmm. um, but it's not going to be like a straightforward. It's going to be, you have to do that performance test to get to the results. It's that baseline value where you're going to really see it kind of straightforward way. Um, does that make sense or do you need me to repeat that, Brett? No, that makes sense to me. But if our, okay. um, if this, if the person who asked the question, though, they have a follow-up to that question and I want to add to it. So we have a lot more to go over. Um, <laughs> yeah. but the, so, so on the sort of continuing again with the plumbing system, Taking a look at uh, both leak detection, I think that's a fantastic question, as well as, um, you know, instant water metering, like just mm -hmm. time, you know, immediate feedback on water meeting. Can any of that play a role in WRI? Are those available somewhere else within NGBS? So they're not going to be factored in for WRI, mm -hmm. but if you're doing the prescriptive mm -hmm. path to comply with the water efficiency mm -hmm. chapter, you can get points if you have a automatic leak detection system or an automatic leak detection um, and shutoff system. Mm -hmm. And then in chapter 10, which is the homeowner education and maintenance chapter, if you have a product installed and a plan in place to do ongoing energy and water verification, you can get some points. And so we've seen projects where based on their requirements for HUD financing, they need to do ongoing water and energy metering. And so some of those systems that are in place to do ongoing um, verification and, and automatic leak detection can really set you up to get points in multiple places in the NGPS system. Mm -hmm. A lot of the green rating systems have um, protocols in place for, um, you know, at the end of the project, um, at least a, a leak inspection be done. Is that then required within NGBS just outside of the WRI that, that just is no leaks at the end of a project? So it's a key component of the water scent certification. So I didn't mm -hmm. show that on my slide. I really kind of highlighted the two mm -hmm. um, pathways at a very high level, but for either path, the prescriptive approach or the performance approach, you have to satisfy a number of mandatory items that come straight from EPA. And that's really checking all the different items within the home mm -hmm. to make sure that no leaks are present. Mm -hmm. um, there's a couple people here who work on renovations, I assume. And you know, we, we, we've got millions of existing homes across our country that we need to fix. Why are you leaving them out? Um, why can't they use this program or get to net zero water? Um, I want to I want to speak up for the the existing <laughs> housing folks here who are feeling left out right now. <laughs> yeah, so we're gonna do a webinar in January that looks at the renovation pathways for NGPS, and I hope that everyone who's asking those questions is able to join then. Um, the yeah, renovation right. pathways within NGPS don't reference WRI. Um, <laughs> there's a there's two different options for demonstrating water efficiency, for either um, showing savings, looking at you know before versus after, and um, Brett calls this the biggest loser approach, and you need to get a minimum of 20% water savings um, to satisfy to get bronze level certification. Um, so that's what's included instead of WRI. And then just like with new construction, there's a kind of straightforward prescriptive path approach. Um, so because the NGBS doesn't include WRI for renovation, that's why we're not offering it. Um, 
you know, then DBS is um, only referencing WRI for new construction. And so that's why we've created a tool and system and process for new construction to, to get that certified WRI school. Great. Well, thank you. And yes, we will be doing a session on uh, existing housing for NGBS uh, in, in 2022. I think it'll be one of our first sessions. So please do join us and come back and hopefully learn a little bit more there. Um, and then real quick, just everybody who is interested in water conservation, what we call the water pillar um, resources, I'm going to drop a quick link into the chat. Um, but we have a whole YouTube playlist on all sorts of water related sessions. This will be added to it. Um, so go check that out. You can learn everything you want to learn about water. Um, and again, just those of you who are tuned in here live right now, um, we are at our time. So you are certainly welcome to be dismissed as far as the continuing education requirements go if you have to get going. But if you want to keep sticking around, keep asking some more questions, we got a few more questions here. We'd love for you to hang out, but we don't want you to feel pressured <laughs> if you need your, if you got to cut and run and grab your certificate to go. So thank you for joining us. But otherwise, we're going to keep um, answering some, some more questions here uh, with Cindy. I appreciate you sticking around. Um, so uh, uh, you talked a little bit about this standalone program, which, you know, I kind of bugged you about mm -hmm. a couple months ago. And yeah. so I was really excited to hear you bring that up as a pilot option. It sounds like if somebody wants to go ahead and just kind of get their feet wet, <laughs> so to say, on WRI and maybe not go into the full green building world, the five pillars of green, as we call them, um, they, it's not a tool currently available for them to just use outside of NGBS, correct? Correct, yeah. So I expect that we'll be able to prop something up by the end of this mm -hmm. year, early next year. And that's still taking shape if that's gonna be a rollout um, for two specific pilot programs, or if that's gonna be a kind of broader rollout to mm -hmm. get WRI independently. Mm -hmm. um, so stay tuned. Um, you know, it really is dependent on, you know, making sure that we can support on the back end with our technology partner and, and online processing and all that. That's the thing that's holding us up. Um, but I think it's really exciting. I, I've, you know, when we were propping up WRI as an offering, we were a little bit unsure if the market was ready and what the appetite would be for WRI as a standalone. Um, but, you know, in the last couple of months, I've been hearing from green building programs that reference WRI or water utilities that want a way to ensure that newly constructed buildings um, are using, you know, up to a set level of water for the course of a year, indoor and outdoor. And so what we have with WRI and WaterSense is a perfect tool for them, you know, that, that they can see it very clearly and the builder also gets some recognition that they can use in their marketing and communication with, with home buyers. So it's like really a win-win for everyone. And then if they're getting that water sense label on top of it, that's just further accolades that they can um, tout and use to build their reputation. So yeah. I think, I think it's exciting. And I think this is where we're headed. We're just not ready quite yet. Um, it's going to be a little bit more time. Yeah. Um, great. Well, um, so we, uh, I think it was a year or two ago, we had the folks who do that big water study, right? The last mm -hmm. one was done in 1999, then they did one in 2016. We have it on our uh, video on our YouTube channel, and they kind of go through and just get all the data you could ever want about home and home water use. Do you all use those kinds of studies within your baseline? And do you just wait for that to get updated or do you do your own internal evaluation to figure out, you know, how water is being used in our country? So the water rating index methodology was developed through the NGBS consensus development process. So there were a number of people on the water task force that had been involved with the WERS program, the water efficiency rating system that's um, out of Albuquerque area, Santa Fe. Um, and so the water rating index is largely an adaptation of that WERS system mm -hmm. that was kind of anonymized and plunked into the NGBS to make it part of an ANSI standard and more accessible for a lot of different users beyond folks that were going through the WERS program. Um, so that's where a lot of that methodology comes from um, and those numbers. 
Um, so I don't, I don't know what it's going to look like going forward, you know, as an, as an ANSI standard then to be updated on a regular basis. And certainly there would be um, kind of impetus to look at those numbers and make sure that they continue to reflect what's typical in terms of construction. Um, yeah, so we will see. And if you want to get engaged with that process, you know, there is an open comment period mm. on our website. You can go to homeinnovation.com slash NGBS and put any feedback about um, any part of the rating system in now, or you can um, let people know that you want to get engaged in that process in the future. Yeah, that's always great when people can have a voice. And I guess that's the part of the ANSI process. So, yep. um, so uh, I got uh, a question here, uh, you know, so you, you, you say testing, like testing the flow rate anyway, not for the sake of the temperature warm up, but testing the flow rate is not required. But two, two thoughts on that. Um, you know, we know that water pressure in a house can drastically change flow rate for the better or for the worse, uh, depending on how you look at it, right? You want that water pressure right in the, in the middle. So is water pressure testing required at all for NGBS? Um, and even outside of that, uh, at, at, you know, as a rater myself going in and looking at um, flow rates, many times the stamps are rubbed off or just completely gone and you really can't tell what you're looking at. So you do it, you get a bucket out and you do a little test similar to the one you do for the structural waste test. So <laughs> would, would NGBS um, allow that in lieu of any other uh, information? Yeah, absolutely. That's going above and beyond mm -hmm. what's expected in terms of okay. the verification protocol. So absolutely, that'd be fine. But at a minimum, you know, looking at that stated value and comparing against um, manufacturer's literature for the, mm -hmm. the products, that's um, all that's required at this point in time. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and you said the, the water pressure testing is a part of the protocol or no? No. No. Okay. Um, and then another uh, 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 question here is on looking at that zero water badge. And I'm really glad you sort of explained the difference to us between net zero water and the challenges it takes to, you know, make sure you're replenishing that water, uh, uh, which I know the living building kind of looks at that. Um, but uh, so obviously you, 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 you list uh, gray water and black water as sort of some options among rainwater. But if I understand gray water correctly, that's just sort of reusing what you already have. And then that turns into black water and then you sort of reuse that and that turns into landscaping. So isn't it true that there'd be no way to be zero water without rainwater or, or can you be? So... That's a really interesting <laughs> question. Um, you could be zero water if you were using gray water and black water. Yeah, you couldn't be zero water without also doing rainwater because we have it set up that, you know, there are certain sources and certain uses associated with each of those different water types. And you would really need to be doing either gray water or like a combination of, of, um, of rainwater plus some other options to be able to get that zero target. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, Great. absolutely right. It just took me a minute to think that through. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm just like how people are going to walk away thinking, oh, they can just get a gray water system in. And I'm like, where does that other water come from? So yeah. Um, but so, so on that note, we have a great question here and, you know, we're, we're, we're dealing with this potentially in Michigan and, and others are dealing with it. Like the reality is gray water, rainwater, black water, it's either illegal almost everywhere, or if it's not illegal, it's not going to, the plumbers are like, this is a gray code area, right? I'm not going to touch this. Don't get me involved in this. Don't call me for your project. So I guess then the question is, do you all play a role in advocacy uh, at all that you can help people change some of these laws so they can actually meet these standards? Um, you know, that's kind of the, 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 the crux of the question that came in, so. Yeah, so um, the NGBS methodology has a note that, you know, rainwater, gray water, black water, should only be used in areas where they are permissible by the local jurisdiction. So mm. if you aren't allowed to do that, you're technically not allowed to claim it as part of the WRI score. Mm -hmm. um, 
you know, I, I recognize that it's, it's really hard. You know, the, it's, it's really tough. A lot of our code officials are not well informed. We have some antiquated, um, you know, regulations on the books and it's just really challenging. And even if in areas where they do allow gray water, um, the code officials might be resistant or, you know, they're just not trained and familiar. And if you do encounter any issues where you want to seek out a WRI or a water sense or your local community is trying to get some additional, um, you know, policies, recognitions, incentives for homes that are water efficient and you need some support, feel free to reach out to me. You know, I can send a letter of support and do what I can to engage our local verifier and, and partner community. Um, but I'd also recommend, you know, taking a look at the resources available through the National Association of Home Builders. Like they have um, a water rating index um, matrix, which would be a really easy summary for like a code official or a city council person to like look at and understand all the different methodologies. Like how does WRI compare to WERS? How does it compare to HERS H2O? What is water sense? How does that compare to these others? And I know that the NIHB folks are working on a more robust water toolkit, which I hope will have advocacy resources that people can like take and use. And mm -hmm. um, if someone wants a contact there, I'm happy to share um, a name and email for a colleague that I have. Yeah, great. Well, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, and I, uh, I don't, I only see one more question here. Um, and so, so since we have you, I kind of want to just throw it out there. Um, but, you know, obviously we're living in a, in a unique time, uh, with the pandemic and we've seen a lot more things go virtual. I've done virtual building audits. Um, so as far as either the WRI or just NGBS in general, what are your standards or allowances, um, you know, to help keep people safe and, uh, do you have any kind of virtual auditing applications at all? Yeah. So we recognize that this past couple of years has been tremendously hard for our verification mm. professionals because of travel restrictions or restrictions to access certain building sites. And so very early on in the pandemic, we set up a virtual inspection protocol and it's available upon request for emergency scenarios where someone has challenges. Um, it is only applicable to visual inspection practices. Right. So any testing that's required, mm -hmm. like lower door testing, duct testing, this, um, you know, structural wastewater testing, that would still need to be done on site. But anything that's visual, like, you know, checking to make sure that the landscaping was installed, that could be absolutely done virtually. Mm -hmm. so, so yes and no. And you know, we're continuing to kind of stay apprised with, you know, how things are going with our verifiers and the continued use of that protocol going forward. Mm -hmm. So the Home Innovations Lab hasn't uh, figured out how to innovate the uh, virtual blower door or duct blaster test yet. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> got to figure it out or we will. I know we will. Um, well, Cindy, I don't see any other questions. I know we stuck around a little bit longer. I appreciate you uh, staying with us, lending us your time. Uh, we're going to have you back in 2022, so I'm excited to talk about that. Like I said, we have so many existing homes. We got we to gotta get moving uh, to start fixing these homes and making them all green. I think everyone deserves a green home. So, um, Cindy, just uh, real quick, where can people go to contact you or learn more about um, the Home Innovations Lab, National Green Building Standard, or WRI? Yeah, so all of, can you, people still see my screen? Um, uh, they can. I have I, I do have a contact screen up, but just for people who maybe can't see. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so go to homeinnovation.com slash green. Um, and then for WRI, it's homeinnovation.com slash WRI. All right. Well, uh, Cindy Wasser, Home Innovations Lab, thank you so much for your time. Take care. Be well. Stay safe out there, everyone. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Be sure to check out all of our courses available online that you can watch anytime and anywhere to pick up your CEUs. Before you go, make sure to subscribe to us on YouTube to get weekly updates and stay up to date on green building science courses, webinars, and home tours. Thanks again.